reality is this was just testing a weekly inverse. So we can expect it at least to go to the four hour leg, right? Like we can expect it at least to go down into this range here. Shouldn't we expect it to, to, you know, at a minimum go here? Right here. Like this is protecting the entire leg. So, you know, you can see the move starts here and, and starts moving up. Uh, it just goes straight up. So should we not just test the whole level to see if we can hold it? And, and we actually broke down the range something down here or wherever we broke down to. I'm not sure. I haven't even looked at the levels, but regardless, did, 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 like this was about the easiest trade in the world from 73.98 to here, which was like a full 8%, which is insane money because you could be making like 30, 40, 50 grand off this trade, right? So, but realistically, this was so easy to see because it's like, oh, we have a weekly inverse and that weekly inverse, it's the, whatever tested the weekly, tested it twice. And then, and then whatever, whatever was rejecting that weekly just inversed a smaller candle, which was just inversing another candle. So, so it was just going after greedy level, after greedy level, after greedy level, inversing all the way down. So, so this was very black and white. Well, I think one of your problems right now is, is, is not understanding the larger picture of what's happening. And, and that will scare you into just wanting to exit trades because you don't really know what to expect for an outcome. So you have a great insight to a local moment, but you have a lack of foresight into a long-term outcome. So Perfect. that's just like, this was, again, um, you know, we, we go to these moves and even, even right now, uh, let's just, I guess, I suppose we could keep everything here. Even right now, if you were to go into the current moment right now, we can just go to maybe like a 15 minute candle and just to get our bearings on this move, yeah. we can say, okay, really what's happening here? We, uh, we tested, oh, look at that perfect bounce too. Jesus, that was nice. That would have been a nice little exit short, re-enter, long take profits. Hmm, not bad. Okay, so, so we know this already got tested, so fine. We're, we know we have the backside of a range right here somewhere. So, so we need to be holding this or this move is breaking, right? So I'm just even going to delete this. Look where we are right now. Perfect. So, so we're laddering up. That's what I know. I know we're laddering up. And what are we laddering up off of? And I'm just going to draw maybe a simple trend here. I know there's going to be a trend that connects from this point to this point. Not because there's a trend that starts here, because I don't want to go and do the work back here. So this is a part of doing trend magic that we'll learn about a little later. There is actually real trends, because this is not what I would call a real trend. But this is a shortcut trend for me because I know somewhere in the, in the past, it's going to go like this, which is going to go here, which is going to go like this, which is going to be a part of a larger trend from a larger time frame right here. So you're going to have, oops, I, I missed snapped at this point. So you're going to have this here. And then you're going to have a larger time frame trend from, from back in, into this point here, which is going to give you the same trend. So this is a bit of trend cheating. But it, it doesn't mean the trend isn't real. It just means it's not the right trend, but it's giving me the same information. So I, you know, I've done this for a long time. I can do some of these little shortcuts. So now I simply know that we're in a moment right now where we are trying to stabilize and set a move up. And, and I don't really need to do any work right now because, because simply I have two points that matter. I have the current hold of the move, which I would have bought and I would have already been up. So I could just exit this trade if it breaks down. And I have the inverse or the trend up top right? I don't, I don't need to really know anything else. So I have my long-term expectation and I have my immediate target. So my immediate target would have been this because it's starting a smaller time frame valley, right? You can see that there. And my entry for me is not based on me looking at these candles here and then saying, oh, what's happening here? What's happening here? Rather, I just already know what's going to happen because if we break through this trend, we're going to go up and test this range somewhere. So, so target becomes very much like this right here. Target becomes very much like this right here. Right? So, so I know if I can enter here, target is here, and you've got a 2% trade. I did this working from the outside inwards, not the inside outwards. Right? Otherwise, your, your primary targets in your mind are going to work like this. You're going to say, let's delete that one. You're going to justify targets, and this is the way you, you, you're doing it by, by what, what I'm hearing. You're going to say, okay, if... This level holds it back. This is the level we're going after. So I should try to find entry somewhere down here, right? So, so, so that's kind of how you'd probably be looking at this trade and you'd be measuring it for profits. Meanwhile, if we break over this trend, we're simply going to there. Or if we go to here, we know that's going to pull the move back long-term, right? So, so a very quick assertion by working from the outsides in instead of the other way around. will give you better foresight to the events that will happen in the future. And when you work inside like that. So, so that's key to, key to understand. Working inside of a trade 
versus working outside of a trade. This is working outside. Working outside of a trade, the, the larger parameters that confine the inner pieces, that will give you foresight. So the outside gives you foresight. The inside gives you entries. That's something very important to know. Almost think of this as like front side, back side holds, where the outside gives you big bounces. The outside will give you your best entries. The inside will give you all the stuff that's not best entry. And this force, this outside will give you foresight, right? Like it'll tell you what's going on in large time frame. So, so this is where we should, because it also builds a parameter of what we can do in the trade. So if we know, right, like this, if, if, we, if we know that this is the parameter of our trade, what can, we, what can we say? If this is where target is, it means that if we stop here, it's still going to dump. So you have a very specific piece of information that is highly usable. So if we hit this level, we pull back, we know that we're going to dump because we know the outside parameters of the trade. Right here becomes an outside parameter of the trade. So this level is supposed to get hit. That's, the, that's what's important to know. This is, if trend breaks, quote unquote, we are supposed to hit this level. If we do not, it means we're in failure, which means we hit this level, which means we are dumping. So it tells us there's, there's nothing left to move up. If we can't break this trend, it means this level can't hold, which is testing whatever range is down here, right? Which means it's going to go after some insanely greedy point right here or possibly something like, this is greedy, but this is really greedy right here because this is holding the entire piece of that leg up. These outside parameters give us two very defined moments, right? This will dump us to this level. And this trend is supposed to bring us to this level right here. Now, this is quite advanced for levels, so you guys aren't there yet. But again, we work through these one piece at a time, right? But you can see why working from the outside in is more important because it tells you what's happening so you're not guessing in the moment. Yes. You use the inside of trades, like the inside pieces of trades. Like uh, here, was, here was another one where it was like, oh, this was a very simple trade. Look, you had trend from... I believe it was, it, I know it was this one actually to this right here. I know these two candles. This was showing me like if I was in this moment right here, I say, oh, well, this is just out of memory. I remember this because I was drawing this in the moment because I was thinking, oh yeah, this is going to dump. So, you know, I'm looking at this right here at around 73.30. I remember that was the price, 73.30. We had just lost our first trend and it was pulling back. And if it couldn't hold this level right here, right? If it couldn't hold that, it was going to dump in a big way because it's, again, it's a very, it's defined by the outlying parameters of the trade. So in this moment, we had already been laddering down. We inverse, we inverse, we inverse. We had all these great entries and we would have took profits in some of these spots anyways, because we would have been like this and we would have said, oh, we're going to end up testing this level right here, which is exactly what we did. We ended up going from 73.98 making, I believe this was supposed to be 4% or 3.8 or something like that. Yeah, close to 4% it was. 3.8. Yeah. I remember because I, you know, measuring this trade in the moment, right? So from, from here to here, it was like 3.8, right? So, so right there was 3.8. And, you know, so this was a three and a half percent trade. So I, you know, this trade was already taken. This was already executed short here, re long here, but then the next one. So this is your interior piece, right? Like this is inside of the trade. You're not, you have the outline parameters that give you the foresight of the move here and here and here and here. And when you, when you have the inner pieces, what you're trading, Pat is, is like, okay, I see a one minute hold like somewhere in here. I don't know. There's some, there's some kind of hold level I'm sure in here, um, wherever it is, it doesn't matter. I'm sure there's, you know, anyways, there's some kind of hold level in here, which is what you purchased. But then six hours later, you're out of a trade. When, if you just wait it because you understood yeah. the foresight of the trade or the outlying parameters, you're going to have better access to know what's happening in the move. Because it's, it's all very easy to explain on a chart when you can do it. But again, being the, the difference between a historian who's somebody who can just mark it after versus someone who's taking the trades in the moment and saying, oh, this makes sense because of reason X, right? Like, yes, that, there's a big difference there. So, Absolutely. so your trade, I love your entry because the short is correct and you use the right information, but it makes perfect sense. Exactly what you said is exactly what I would have guessed probably close that trade for like 1% or something. Meanwhile, oh, less probably. 
Yeah, exactly. Because you're trying to take, because there's no outline parameters, right? Oh, well, I, would, I would have exited on the opposite one minute uh, untested hold, which might have been, yeah. might have been a quarter of a percent. Meanwhile, look at how much you missed because yeah. you, you didn't yeah. see the outline parameters. Because again, this was just quite simple. You have a weekly inverse, so you're going to go down and test some pretty big hold levels, right? Like you're going to test some, you can see on the 12 hour, you've got three legs up right to the weekly. Like this is not rocket science. This is very simple. The greediest level on the 12 hour. Yeah, that looks good. Hell, we don't even need to get this greedy. We could simply just go to the four hour. Like if, we, if we're inversing off a weekly and we're continuing to hold that weekly down, should we not just be targeting a four hour? Heck, even here is fine. Even, even the backside on the four hour is fine. And you would have still made a killing. You might not have gotten an extra 3%, but you would have made at least 3% on this instead of less than one, right? Like 72.30 to here. You're at, crikey, you're at 4.5%. Even if you front ran this thing to 4% all the way up here, you, this is a fantastic trade. Like that's, but you see, it's very easy to see if you understand the outlying parameters, right? Yes. So, so that's your problem on that trade is that you have... Um, not and that is, that, is, that is all of my trades, I can tell you, because I mean, obviously I'm working off the same method. So let's look at another one of yours, and then we're going to look at some of Dilbert's to see where he's... Let me just stop my screen share here and hand access over to you. Turn my screen share off. You should have the ability to do it now. Let me know if you do. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Share my screen. So, are we on mine now? Or yours? Uh, yeah, mine. we're on yours. So just pick another random spot. Maybe if there's one that you specifically wanted to uh, understand what's happening, that would be a good start here. Good second one, or we can just pick another random one. I'm going to find you a, a terrible trade. Sure. Sorry that I did, and you can tell me what I did wrong. Uh, bum, 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 bum. I actually color-coded them. Can't so this is part of doing what's called post-analytic work. So we analyze after trades what went wrong, and we understand why, so that we <laughs> but, don't yeah, yeah. make these mistakes in the future. This is all about every trader has mistakes. So everybody I, I do this with, they all have their own independent mistakes they make, right? This is about pointing a finger at those mistakes and saying, okay, here it is, let's fix it. Because really at this point, um, there's no reason with the knowledge that you have at this point, there's no reason why you shouldn't be making thousands and thousands of dollars a week. These two are probably, it's too easy to say why I set a trade and went to bed. Stupid. And got liquidated on both of them. Don't do that. Stay, don't put a trade on when you're not at the computer. Under two days. Right, here's one here. I think that's a wrong statement. I think you can go to bed with active trades as long as you understand the, 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 the what parameters I'm of the trade. Okay. Okay, here's one here then. I had the opportunity to get out with no loss, but stayed too long and exited late. Short so of the don't one. see anything? We just see your... Yeah, I'm just thinking, talking to myself. I'm going to get okay. it now. 8th of April, 9 p.m., Seven, three, find, two, find one. Find in your order history, and then we'll work okay. from there. Okay. Eight of April, nine p.m. Order history. I love post analytics. It makes people feel like because you're it's pointing horrible. at them. It's horrible. <laughs> you're pointing a finger at them. But really, this is the best thing we could possibly it's ever do. <laughs> this is the best, but, but this is the best thing we can ever do for trading because this type of leak finding, that's what I call it, leak finding, right? We, we yeah. find these leaks in life at a very um, young age. And I'm still young, so maybe, yeah, okay, well, fine, whatever. A long time ago, we'll say that. Um, a long time ago. <laughs> very, very famous person said to me, and I, I was only 16 at the time or 17 maybe, so it stuck with me and, and, and helped me grow. He said, you know, the, 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 the way we learn the most in life is through failure. So, so real failure is when we can't learn from failure because failure is our greatest teacher. Because if we can understand why we fail, we can teach ourselves 
how to fix that, fix it, right? Fix, fix it, but yeah. the real failure is when you say, when, when you let failure just be failure and you don't learn anything from it, that's failure, right? Very so that's good. why doing post analytics like this is so important because we do these post analytics and we, um, so that's the one we just looked at there. Pat. I think it is, but actually we, we pick something, we pick the, the last bad one. Sure. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Hang no. on. Right up to, so my last trade was I bought, I was that 69 yeah, I bought, you see, there you go. I bought in at 6906. I got out at 6922. <laughs> you know, it's, it's such a short. So let's see. Uh, what and it lasted, it lasted 45 minutes. Okay, so let's see what you did here, whether this is a good or a bad trade. Because okay. this doesn't mean just because it's a 45 minute, it's a bad trade. Yeah. But we definitely want to see 20, 20, 2020 on the tent. Somewhere around here. Just what the, I, I bought. Okay, so I bought in here at six nine o six. So let me see twenty twenty somewhere around here. I bought at six nine o six. So I would have bought off this hold here or something like this. Let me see. Okay, so mark where you think you would have bought it. So I bought on this one here. So your mm. finance time and what you have down there could possibly be off as well. Sometimes that happens. It looks it about it. it could it, be. Is it? Yeah. Like for instance, we're an hour ahead. That's UTC. And I was I was trying to re uh, figure out my trades matching up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they're an hour or two in either direction. That was, uh, I mean, okay, I can't even, I can't even stand over this trade because uh, in a very small time frame, I entered on a one minute hold, but I, I entered at the top of a range here. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit and, uh, or actually, no, you know what, we're good, we're good. We actually don't need to zoom out. Um, that's good, that's perfect and, and leave it there. So, so I'm presuming that you saw this level right here. So mark that level for me. As we'll just use that as a base to this move, because then I want to talk through. Okay, you what? saw which level market again, please? Either this one or this one. It's going to it be was, one of these. It was fingers. probably this one here, this top here. Possible. Come on, behave. Because you got the magnet tool on. That's why. That's good. Though. So sixty nine hundred. So you're you're looking at this. Looking back at this trade, what do you tell me? You know, you know that you got out short, and you know where the price is going. I. I haven't really checked. What is the first thing you're seeing on this trade? Because this is important. Okay. Because when remember, we, I went long here, so right. Uh, but when you're, when you're looking at trades to make these decisions, when we're looking at these trades to make these decisions, there's always going to be something like there's always going to be a first thought, a second thought. It's human nature. Yeah. We're creatures of okay. habit. It's it's the way we operate. I'll so tell you then. What would your first thought have been here? My first thought here is that this was an origin level that got broken and retested, so I thought it was going to move on. Okay. So okay. this origin beginning here, we'll say. Okay, so you're looking to hold over top of that and move up. That's your first thought yeah. because you're sitting there saying, okay. We'll and I know in my brain and the way I was working, I probably was looking at exit here, not here. Yeah. You know, so I would have been just saying, yeah, if I get 6975, I'm taking it. Okay. Um, but for some reason, I left it at 6922, and that might have been, a, as you were on the 15 minute here, if I go to one minute, there's probably an inverse hold. Some are very, very local, and I would have just got out. Yeah, probably something inside of this candle here by the looks of it. You don't have to yeah. switch time frames. Yeah, so I would, I would, I would, it would have been the very, very first one minute untested because I entered on a one minute, and I'd say, right, I'm getting out at the opposite side. Clearly, this is, yeah, we're, we're just going to go right back to the same thing because clearly the, the hierarchy of your decisions is the area where you're struggling here because I'm seeing a very different set of information than you are. So me and you, we know a lot of the same information, okay? So, so you and I theoretically could fill out a test and get relatively the same answers, right? So, so we know the same information. It's just the difference between you and I now is, is that what I see and, and the hierarchy that I see it in and the order of my thoughts are different than yours.
So again, you are so locally focused because the first thing that yes. you did is, is you have this trade here. And the first thing you said is, oh, we have an origin right here. This is highly local within the move, right? Like you are working again from the middle part of the move out. Yes. So the first thing I see is like this. I say, clearly you have some type of inverse level that's being tested here, which is being uh, a move off of this leg. So, so really this should be target for me. So, so we already have a tested inverse level that's holding this move down. Key information there. It is holding this move down. So the first thing I do is I'm working outwards. And you know, the next thing I see is I say, okay, this is being tested. Ladder, 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 ladder. Like that. See? Ladder, 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 yes, ladder. Yes. So the first piece of information that I've ascertained from this chart is, oh, this is inversing the move while laddering down. Uh-oh, this is not good. Because now we're starting to talk about, okay, shoot, we're probably going to be inversing this move now and, and so forth and so forth. And then the next piece of information I see is this. I say, okay, so we tested something here that didn't hold. It wasn't greedy enough. So we went after the greedier range inside of the same hold level. So we went after the greediest range, which is holding a move. Okay, so, so the bottom here, this little section of candles is telling me we tested a large level. It wasn't enough to hold the move and we tested the, the greediest range in it. So there's going to be a lot of people entering. The first two things I see on my chart are this. I see this matched to this. So now, now that's the first thing I see, right? So, so what me and you are seeing, although we have the exact same information, is highly different. Now, I also <coughs> understand now that if in this grouping of moves right here, we are not going to be stopped by something like this. This little inverse hold here is not going to be enough to stop us because this is showing me, oh, we just tested a four hour. We just tested the greediest range. We held some kind of major leg. So if we hold some kind of major leg, it means we're probably going to come out and, and, and test outside of a trend somewhere in the future. So what we're going to do is we are going to do this. I'm going to strike a line from the left screen to the right side of the screen like this, and I am going to draw my trend like this. And I want you to just kind of pan to the right for me and see what you how this plays way. out based on my lines. So keep going, keep going. And we know 69.50. You see how we're laddering down? Because 69.50 is that, that level that we've been just constantly inversing. And we ended up breaking trend. So, so this trend that would have been, it's okay, you can leave it there. I can uh, readjust it. Um, so this trend that would have been like this that I had drawn. So you see what I see is very different than what you see in this trade because I have a very defined set of criteria. One is showing me a ladder down against trend off of a big level. So that means to me that really my next entry should simply be the greediest part of this, which is right here, which means we are going to hold this move up because again, the information that I've ascertained off this move is that we test at a four hour. We um, now, okay, a little bit unfair because I know this is a four hour, this first little wick down that I have this kind of uh, scoop around, but regardless, this is exactly how it reads. It just tested some major level bounced off of it because that was the backside and went after the front side greedy part of the hold level. That's going to create trend, which is going to break if it keeps inversing up here, which means our entry simply becomes the greediest hold level. And if this doesn't hold, we just get out of the move. So you right. see, my <coughs> information is a lot more complete because I've worked from the outside in. So two yes. trades that I've seen you do, I've seen you expose a major flaw that you have, and it's the same flaw in both trades. It's not that you don't know what your uh, levels are, it's that your queue of information is very different than mine, right? So working from the outside in will allow you to alleviate that and make instant sense out of these things. Because really, this should have been a short. Or even this trend loss should be a short. And it might only be a 2% yeah. trade, but 2% is, or just 1%. Still, 1% is very good. 1% uh, mm -hmm. in failure is, is very good. And you could still be in this short at 1% plus right now. And you could be just saying like, oh, I'm up a percent. Maybe this is going to go down another 5%. Or you could, you could exit once you hit the level that you appropriate, right? Or you could just take profits. Yes. But our, our gathering of what is going to happen in this chart is, is very different oh, yeah. based it's on the true. same candles. And it's not because we have different technical information. It's because we have a different way of looking at it. So yeah, your, your flaw is as clear as day. It's, it's you work too much inwards. You're working too much inside of your candles and looking at immediate levels. Um, Great. I'm, I'm delighted to learn that. I, I will start uh, practicing that from the outside in. Does it make sense? Like how yes, I came to that conclusion? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you very much. I think that's... Thank um, like you said, I'll, you I'll learn from the failure. And could I ask you just, am I on my own with that? Or is that something you're seeing with...
So you're a little further ahead than most people in terms of what they're seeing. They, we have very, uh, a, a various way in which we step through information, right? So sometimes you can teach people technical analysis and they will get hung up on, okay, where do I find hold levels? Where do I find break levels? Once you pass that point, you know, you get into the most greedy hold levels or the most greedy break levels. And, and you know, some of these further technical analysis points we, we work through. And sometimes people get stuck there for months and months and months because they just can't quite understand that there's a, there's a great struggle with this, okay? People try to focus and pinpoint on finding the greediest level for best entry. And that's the most important part of the trade for them. That, that's kind of their golden moment is if I can find the greediest level, this is, means I'm, I'm good. What they don't understand is the theory behind it. The theory behind it is that we have a hold level here. It's not about getting the best entry. It's about protecting the leg of the move because I, and you know, I tell people this all the time. If we can have just from this little line to this little line, and I'm going to drag it all the way to the right side of the screen, it's still a trend. And, and it's a trend because it didn't hit the break level. So the most important part of understanding hold and break levels is that they either create a trend or they do not. So a hold level, no matter how greedy it gets, will create a trend. So that's the important piece of information to understand about hold levels. Now, we use hold levels as targets to get best entry. But really, if there's a trend there, it means we have protection in the future, right? It means we have some type of base to understand where our decisions must be made in the future. Oh, it's going to pass through this trend, which just tested the greediest hold level. Therefore, there is nothing left. We are probably breaking down the move into a larger trend or we're setting a downtrend. So the, the key piece of information there, again, is, is understanding the theory behind why hold levels are what they are. So when you understand why hold levels are what they are, you can understand that any hold level can be hit. Every single candle could theoretically be a hold level, but it's, it's also understanding which ones will get hit, right? So we have these greedy points inside of ranges, but as long as one of those ranges can protect the leg, we have a trend, which means technically we're moving in that same direction. So a lot of people will get stuck on understanding the deeper concept of why a hold level is important. So is everybody at the same point? No, because some people can't grasp that. They just focus so much on the hold level while ignoring the theory behind it. Not understanding that, yes, you can have any hold level that gets hit, but really the key information is, did that leg get hit or not? So hold levels are we place orders, right? Almost kind of like two different sides to, to what a hold level is. A hold level is where we place orders, okay? But a break level is what tells us whether it's moving up or down. So the break gives us the information. The hold gives us the entry. So when you can combine the two and understand what they mean, you really, you really can just limit all losses in, in, in all trades because you simply either have a trend holding a move up because it hit a greedy hold level and you got really good entry against range or you, you're breaking that move down, right? It's foresight into seeing what's happening next versus yes. just trying to catch the, the knife on a move and just crossing your fingers and just saying, oh, I, I need to make 2% because this was really risky. There's a difference there. So yeah, yeah. not everybody will be at the, everybody will come to this crossroad where they will get to where you're at right now, where they're working way too immediate and not from the outside in. Everybody will get to that point. Now, how fast they get there is another question. Everybody gets to this point, Pat. It's just the speed in which they get to there is it, every single individual is different. It just so happens you and Dilbert are at that moment right now. The key, the key then for us is whether we can move off that crossroads to the next uh, understanding then. Yeah, and, and we're going to talk about this today. Polarization, we're going to talk about market meta advance, right? We're, we're starting this off by finding your leaks so yeah, that going yeah. forward in this lesson, because this isn't even the lesson. This is, you know, part of, part of the lesson. This is post-chart analytics, right? And this is what we have to do to understand where we're failing because it, it, it quickly exposes where we need help. Which is the oh, it's, it's fantastic. Thank you. And, and, you know, I have no yeah. problem with that at all. That's brilliant. This is like, if, if there's a roadblock in the way, if there's anything holding you back, it, it reveals it instantly. Like, like the snap yeah. of a finger, it is just right in front of your face. And, and, and now you just drive around it. So, yeah, you, you simply, you know, foresight into the, into the moment. So, um, yeah. no, both your trades are the exact same. That You have no other flaws other than that. You know, you're buying the right levels, you're marking the right levels. I don't, I, it's clear to me that your technicals are, are exactly what they're supposed to be. It's just now we work into more of the um, practical use of them, right? Of course. Yeah.